rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary. Alleluia. For the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who through the resurrection of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, is vouchsafed to give joy to the whole world, grant, we beseech thee, that through his mother, the Virgin Mary, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. In tua gratari Dei, et angeli di figa di umi tutum eum. Iurica materia sa vision causa meum de gente non sancta, ma homine, ne tu condolo soro, Amen. Quetus Deus, quoti tuum, quarge felicis, quale tristis in cielo, tuum digim equitus. Emite lucem tuum benetatum tuum, iusim et edux, et non tributum se non dimontum sanctum tuum in tabernacula tua. Et in tua gratari Dei, et angeli di figa di umi tutum eum. Quando te tu digi incitra, Deus, Deus, meus, quae tristis anima mea, ad quale tu dobas mea. Sper in Deo, quore me tal compitevo ini, salutare vultus me, et Deus meus. Gloria, Patria, Filio, Spiritu e Santo, sicur de rat in principio, e nunc et sempre, et in secula seculorum. Amen. In tua gloriare Dei, et engli di figa di un tutum eum, aut in Dodum nostrum, in Domine Domini, qui fece cenum et terra. Confitio Domino tendi viati Maria tendi viati viati metale tanti uomini viati Juan Bautista e tanti fortis Pedro e Paolo viati Juan Maria Tiani Juan Bus tanti Bobis Fratres me obtavi in escogitazione me vuoi d'opere me occulta me occulta me o massima occulta e di opere o beata Maria Antentissima e viati metale ma tanti non beati mi Juan Bautista e tanti fortis Pedro e Paolo me viati mi Juan Maria Tiani Juan et Santo e Bobis Fratres orrore come è Domino me o massima Confitio Deo Omnipotenti, Beate Maria Sempre Vigini, Beate Michaeli Arcanidium, Beato Ioane Battiste, Sancti Sepostolis Petru et Paolo Omnibus Sanctis et Divi Pater, Qui ad Gavini Mis Cogitazione Verbo et Opere, Meo Culpa, Meo Culpa, Meo Maxima Culpa, Eri o prego beatam, Mariam sempre virginem, beatum e caelum arcanidium, beatum Ioane Baptistam, Santos Apostos Petrus, Paulum, Omnes Santos, et te, Pater, orare po me, ad omenum del nostro. Miseriatum vestium di potenza, e vestium di misificatis vestium di spirita, e gozit vitam et anam. Amen. E dungendo siamo istruzioni, metri missioni, per che torno a soli, tu vivi a tu, e siamo in impotenza, e vedere cui tornimus. Amen. Deo scritto in verso, scritto in dicabis, no? Em plem soleta vitor in te, pot sendi no vitor me misericordiam tuam, et salutare tuam da nobis, domine exalti d'azione meam, et clamo meus et te venia, dominus obiscum, et cum spirito tuo, orlebus. In medio ecclesia e per lui tosei, usi di inflevite un dominus spiritus sapiens et intellectus, solum gloria in duiteum, alleluia, alleluia. Bono mes confiteri domino e salere in nomini tua altissime. Gloria, Patria, Figlio e Spirito e Santo, sicur erat in principio e nunc et sempre, et in secula seculorum, Amen. In medio ecclesia e per lui tosei, usi di inflevite un dominus spiritus sapiens et intellectus, solum gloria in duiteum, alleluia, alleluia. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christa eleison, Christa eleison, Christa eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax hominibus mori voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te, gratis asimus di fronte magum gloriam tuam, Domine Deus, Vex Celestis, Deus Patrin Onnipotens, Domine Filio Unigenita e Iaesu Christe, Domine Deus, Omnius Dei, Filius Patris, qui tolis peccato mundi, miserere nobis, qui tolis peccato mundi, sushi per defecazionem nostram, qui sedes ed exeram Patris, miserere nobis, quali am tu solus Sanctus, tu solus Dominus, tu solus Altissimus, Iaesu Christe, cum Sanctus Spiritu in gloria Dei Patris, Amen. Paxo vobis et cum spirito tuo. Orrebus. Deus, qui populo tua eterne salutis beatum, Gregorium ministerium tribuisti, presta caesmus, ut quem doctorem vitae habuimus interis, 
in the Tresiorum, habere meriamur in Cheis. Per Domino nostro, mi hai sofris con Pisium tuum, e te con tu vederegni ad un'eritati solitus sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Nex oripili, libri sapientiae. Justus corsum tradit ad vigilandum di luculo ad dominum, in cui fecit ad ilum, et di conspectu altissimi de precapitur, a perriet ossum in orazioni et provilet si suis de precapitur, si enim dominus mandus voluerit spiritu intelligentiae replepiteum ilum, et divse tanquam imbres mite de loquia sapientiae sue, et in orazioni cofitibutur dominum, et divse dirigit consilium eus et disciplinam, et in absconti fi suis consiliabitur, ipse palam taci et disciplinam doctrinae sue, et in lege testamenti domini gloriabitur, da non dabunt multi sapientia meius, et usque in seclum der non delibitur, non recedit memoria eius, et nomen eius requiretur a generazione in generazione, sapientia meius enerabunt de gente, et laude meius enunciabit ecclesia. Deo gratias. Alleluia, alleluia. Amavi Teum Dominus et donavi Teum, solum gloria in Viteum, Alleluia! Lussus emenavit sicur Lilium et florebit in eternum ante Dominum, Alleluia! Dominus suaviscum, et cum spirito tuo, sequentia sancti evangelii secundum et teum, gloria tibi domus. In ino tempore dixit Iesus discipuli suis, vos estis altere, quod si salium venio edit in quos salietur, anihilum valet ultra inisiu tu matatur, forrazi pucumetur a cominibus. Vos estis lux mundi, non potes cibitas absconti supra monte imposita, neque eccendu lucernum et fonanteum submodio, sed supra cadalambrum, ut lucet omnibus qui in domus sum. Sic lucet lux vesta coram hominibus, ut videi ant opera vesta bona, et glorificent patrum vestum qui in celis eis. Non lite putare, quaniam veni solvere legem, aut profetas, non veni solvere, sed et implere. Amen, qui vedica vobis, doni transia celum et terra, ioto unum aut unus apex non preteri vita lege, doni homi a fianc. Qui ergo solvere tunum demandatis istis minimis et ocluveris et homines, minimus vocabitur in regno celorum. Qui autem fecerit et ocluverit, in manus vocabitur in regno celorum. Laus tibi Christi. On this, the feast of St. Gregory of Nazianzus, the theologian. The epistle is taken from the uh, Book of Wisdom. With dedicated heart, the faithful man keeps early vigil at the Lord's gates to win audience for his plea from the Most High. His lips will be eloquent in prayer as he entreats pardon for his sins. At the Lord's sovereign pleasure, he will be filled with a spirit of discernment so that he pours out showers of wise utterance, giving thanks to the Lord in his prayer. His plans and his thoughts guided from above, he will have skill in the divine mysteries, will make known to all the tradition of teaching he has received, and take pride in that law which is the Lord's covenant with man. This wisdom of his, extolled on every side, will never fall into oblivion. The memory of him, the renown of him, will be held in honour from age to age. His wise words will become a legend among the nations. Wherever men assemble, his praise will be told. And the Holy Gospel is the continuation of that according to St. Matthew. At this time, Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth. If the salt loses its taste, what is there left to give taste to it? There is no more to be done with it, but throw it out of doors for men to tread it underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city cannot be hidden if it is built on a mountain top. A lamp is not lighted to be put away under a bushel measure. It is put on the lampstand to give light to all the people of the house. And your light must shine so brightly before men that they can see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to set aside the law and the prophets. I have not come to set them aside, but to bring them to perfection. Believe me, heaven and earth must disappear sooner than that one jot, one flourish disappear from the law. It must all be accomplished. 
Whoever then sets aside one of these commandments, though it were the least, and teaches men to do the like, will be of least account in the kingdom of heaven. But the man who keeps them and teaches others to keep them will be accounted in the kingdom of heaven as the greatest. Ave Maria, gratia plena Dominus tecum, benedicta tua mulieribus, e benedictus uctus ventris tu Iesus. Sancta Maria, Mate Dei, orru nobis peccatoribus, nunc in terrari motis nostre. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Carissimi beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast Mass on this, the feast, as we said, of St. Gregory Nazianzen, Bishop and Doctor of the Church. Uh, Bishop uh, uh, originally of Samisia uh, and then of Caesarea, uh, sorry, um, Nazianzus, kind of, an auxiliary Bishop of Nazianzus, and then eventually uh, Archbishop of Constantinople, but a reluctant bishop. That is to say that, um, well, indeed, although brought up uh, by uh, Christian parents, um, he wasn't baptised. He was born uh, just a year or so after the uh, uh, Council of uh, Nicaea. Uh, but uh, he, uh, he wasn't baptised until uh, 360 AD. Uh, and then soon after, uh, this was due to the conversion in part perhaps uh, by his father uh, to the faith, uh, who uh, in 329 was made bishop uh, of Nazianzus. Uh, it wasn't until sometime after in 360 that he was ordained a priest uh, by his father. And uh, Gregory considered that a great imposition on him. By this point, he had already studied, uh, studied uh, rhetoric at the uh, uh, great centres of uh, learning then at that time of Caesarea, of Alexandria and at Athens. And it was at Athens that he was to meet uh, Basil, later of Caesarea, uh, and Julian uh, Flavius, who would later become Julian the Apostate uh, Emperor. Uh, his friendship with uh, Basil, of course, would end up later with his being consecrated uh, a bishop, uh, as I say, much to his, again, his chagrin. Uh, Gregory, more than anything, really, wanted to be an ascetic. If anything, he wanted to be a monk. Uh, but such were the vicissitudes of the time and uh, the needs and the direction of the Holy Spirit for his gifts and his talents and ability that God, out of his providence, had imbued him with. It was necessary for Gregory instead to be uh, reluctantly but necessarily involved uh, in the great controversies of his day. He is held as a great doctor of the church in the West as one, as one of the great holy hierarchs uh, in the East. He is one of only three uh, saints in the East to be given the epithet theologian. And he is considered uh, by all uh, the theologian, the theologian of the Trinity. Uh, his learning and his knowledge and his wisdom and his defence of the Orthodox faith, though, of course, brought him into difficulty with the ruling powers. Not least of all, Julian Flavius, when he had become Julian the Apostate of the Empire, uh, Gregory did not, uh, well, Gregory composed his invectives, uh, which were apologetics uh, for the Christian faith and for the Orthodox expression of that faith. This uh, Julian uh, did not appreciate uh, and uh, sought to prosecute uh, his former uh, college mate. However, uh, before he was able to do any serious damage, uh, Julian Flavius uh, died. However, he was succeeded uh, by an Arian, and uh, thus uh, Gregory found himself embroiled in the Arian controversy that took up so much of the uh, fourth century uh, efforts and energies uh, of the saints. Uh, you may remember that we uh, commemorated the other day St Athanasius, uh, there at the beginning of the fourth century, uh, right at the beginning of the Arian controversy, of course, uh, who countered Arian, uh, Arius uh, in the Council of Nicaea in 325 in Constantinople. And though orthodoxy won out, at that great council, uh, by the time that uh, Basil uh, and Gregory were bishops, uh, Arianism had taken over much of the church, um, so that a great number 
uh, partly, of course, in sympathy with the emperor and seeking his favour, no doubt, but almost um, all the majority of the bishops of the church uh, at one time were Arians, had fallen foul uh, of this uh, heresy. And so Gregory and uh, Basil uh, were uh, heavily engaged uh, in the defence of the Orthodox faith. Remember, Orthodox as a term itself means ortho, meaning right, and dox, of course, meaning doctrine, right doctrine. Uh, as I say, uh, he was prevailed upon by uh, Basil to become an auxiliary bishop for Basil, uh, um, but uh, he hated uh, the uh, little outpost uh, that Basil had sent him to, and after sticking it out for a year, uh, determined to leave the place and return to Nazianzus and to assist his father, who was bishop there. Um, his father had got in, uh, broiled in some controversies uh, with the locals, which uh, Gregory was able to sort out and then acted as an auxiliary bishop to his father. When his father died, the diocese, the people, the faithful, wanted to acclaim him as the new diocesan bishop of Nazianzus, but uh, Gregory kept demurring. Uh, eventually, too, Basil also was on his case, uh, keeping on about him returning to uh, uh, be his auxiliary, uh, to which Gregory said, I have no desire to be embroiled with all your political controversies. Nonetheless, uh, eventually, uh, he was called to Constantinople, uh, uh, there to uh, become, under the uh, new Orthodox uh, Emperor, uh, the Archbishop. But uh, there were still great powerful influences uh, and political intrigues within the city, uh, so that at one point even Gregory and another bishop were interrupted in a church uh, during divine liturgy. Uh, the other bishop sadly was martyred. Uh, but uh, Gregory managed to escape barely with his life. Eventually, however, uh, uh, sanity or at least uh, uh, some control came to the situation and he was enthroned as Archbishop uh, of Constantinople. Uh, but that was uh, no easy um, uh, uh, seat, uh, no easy throne, no easy chair to uh, hold and eventually he retired uh, exhausted and uh, finally was able to experience something in the last couple of years of his life of that ascetic and quietude that he desired and solicitude uh, to be with God. So we celebrate uh, this uh, great saint today uh, remembering his many struggles uh, with uh, those who sought to uh, uh, impose heresy uh, upon the church <coughs> both by political power uh, and even from within. And uh, we give thanks for his many uh, writings and teachings which have uh, uh, pertained to this day, including his uh, great treaties, uh, or tra great treatises uh, on uh, the Trinity, which has helped to form uh, so much our understanding today theologically of that wonderful and great mystery of the Triune Godhead. Today's epistle, uh, or rather uh, lesson, uh, seemed almost to speak uh, uh, directly uh, of uh, this great... With dedicated heart, the faithful man keeps early vigil at the Lord's gates to win audience for his plea from the Most High, speaking, of course, to the extreme piety uh, of this godly man. His lips will be eloquent in prayer as he entreats pardon for his sins. Of course, the pious man is ever conscious of his unworthiness before God, whilst at the same time striving for that perfection, as our Lord urges us all. At the Lord's sovereign pleasure, he will be filled with a spirit of discernment, so that he pours out showers of wise utterance, giving thanks to the Lord in his prayer. Well, indeed, of course, we know that uh, Gregory was uh, uh, a great scholar and had great wisdom. And indeed, uh, for all his great teaching and for the authority with which he taught, nonetheless, this was all guided, aided and abetted and ultimately successful because of his intercession with God. 
His plans and his thoughts guided from above, he will have skill in the divine mysteries, will make known to all the tradition of teaching he has received, and take pride in that law which is the Lord's covenant with man. Indeed, his defence of orthodoxy, of the right doctrine, is uh, clearly spoken to, or rather that verse speaks to it. This wisdom of his, extolled on every side, will never fall into oblivion. The memory of him, the renown of him, will be held in honour from age to age. His wise words will become a legend among the nations. Wherever men assemble, his praise will be told. Well, clearly, uh, this almost could have been prophetic uh, concerning uh, the witness and life of St Gregory. But the Gospel today, of course, speaks to us, reminds us of our need, likewise to ourselves, strive after that perfection uh, which our Lord uh, desires of us. Remember, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And here we hear the Lord's words to keep the law. Remember, I have not come to set them aside, but to bring them to perfection. Believe me, heaven and earth must sooner disappear than, the what, than that one jot, one flourish disappear from the law. It must all be accomplished. This, my brothers and sisters, is always worthy of our hearing to remember uh, that the Christian life is an ordered life. Yes, indeed, liberation and freedom comes with salvation, but also too comes the responsibility to our, keep ourselves on that straight and narrow path to salvation, to the heavenly gate, uh, which requires us then to abide by and to keep God's laws. The great irony, of course, is that, our, uh, is that keeping God's laws is what gives us freedom and liberation. As I've said before, those who swear to the religious life always speak of the sense of uh, liberation and freedom uh, that the vows, the evangelical councils uh, afford them. But likewise too, so should the great summary of the law, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul and with all your strength, and to love your neighbour as yourself, these too, my brothers and sisters, afford us great freedom and liberation if we fully understand and keep them, if we understand the spirit of them, and indeed if we abide by the letter of them. After all, this is God's law. This is, uh, as our Lord is, tells us by uh, his teaching of it, this is the summary of the law. If we grasp these two principles, we understand everything. And the key, of course, is to remember that the first and greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God. And notice how our Lord says, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength meaning the whole person, the whole being, and meaning literally everything, everything. We have a tendency, uh, many of us, to compartmentalise our lives. We have a tendency, as it were, to uh, create or divide our lives into boxes. But as Christians, our faith must consume our whole life, our whole being. And notice that when our Lord says, with your all your heart, all your mind, all your soul and all your strength. He is meaning body and spirit. He's meaning our whole being so that we can't, uh, we can't cut off uh, the spiritual from uh, the material. We can't cut off the heavenly from the earthly. We are to uh, manifest love for God in all spheres of our life both public and private, both secret and known, or secret and shared, in every aspect, in every corner of our life and of our being. Nothing is to be preserved, as it were, or spared for ourselves. But all of our being is to be given to God as an offering of love. And only by fulfilling the first commandment can we really fulfil the second part, to love our neighbours as ourselves. Which, of course, is not as though it might appear on first reading uh, to be narcissistic. 
not meaning to love, as it were, others as we uh, would desire to be loved ourselves in the, in the vain sense, but rather, of course, uh, that the same love that we receive from God, which is the only true love that we ought and can and need to receive, by that same love we can help and love others. That is, uh, that we should live sacrificially for others. And as I've said before, my brothers and sisters, this is why uh, our understanding, for example, of sacrificial giving and of sacrificial assistance for others uh, should in no wise be limited. We should not think to ourselves, I will only give a certain percentage of myself or of my material things or of my time or of my gifts and abilities. We should not be thinking uh, to uh, uh, give the minimum and we should not certainly be thinking only to give that which we can spare but we are bid by the gospel to live and love sacrificially meaning sometimes to the detriment of oneself meaning sometimes to give up literally the opportunity to enjoy or to have something for oneself having given it away to another. And that sacrificial giving, of course, needs itself to address uh, needs, needs that other people have. Our giving should be considered. Again, we should not just uh, throw money at different things, at good causes, without ever paying more interest as to what happens with those good causes. Rather, we should have a care and concern to give more than just our money, but also to our consideration, our time, our contemplation, something of ourselves. Money is only representative. It is only a token, as it were, of the spirit of our giving. But if we are truly to uh, give sacrificially, we have to give something of ourselves, not just something from ourselves, but something of ourselves so that it is truly a sacrifice from the whole of our being, body, mind, soul and spirit, that it is with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul and with all our strength. Indeed, giving money in many ways, and I know uh, <laughs> uh, this may come as a shock to some, but giving money in some ways uh, should be the last resort in the sense that really we ought to get involved we ought to get involved lending time, lending our time, lending our skills, lending our abilities, lending our physical strength if necessary. Money, as it were, should be a manifestation of our spirit of giving, but not the limit or summation of our giving. This, my brothers and sisters, is how we are to emulate our master and our teacher, our Lord, our friend, our brother, our saviour, our God. God, in his loving toward us, is generous beyond measure, overwhelming in his love toward us. It is only we who limit our perception or our appreciation, let alone our reception of his love. Often when we are self-obsessed, consumed by ourselves, we put a distance between God and us, limiting our ability to appreciate and realise his love and his mercy toward us. And this is why true love of God must, must encapsulate our whole being, so that we never put a distance between ourselves and God. So that in everything we mirror him in our generosity toward others, in our generosity of spirit, in our generosity of actual giving, in our generosity of self-sacrifice for the other. Our Lord, when he submitted himself to crucifixion, did not, as it were, say, uh, only this bit only this hand and this foot is for you guys. Uh, the rest is for, is for something else. 
He gave his whole self, his whole being. Likewise, my brothers and sisters, should we respond with everything that we have, everything that we have, we should desire to give to him who sacrificed everything he had that we might know God, God's generous and superabundant love for us. Let us then, my brothers and sisters, avail ourselves today. You can find the writings of St. Gregory of Nazianzen all over uh, the internet. Avail yourselves of some of his teaching, of some of his wisdom. Appreciate uh, that thought that uh, has guided and led and influenced uh, so many Christians for so many centuries. And remember that this wisdom and this thought came from a man who truly had given himself completely to God. And seek yourself both to be edified and to be inspired to change and convert your own thinking and your own life, to turn your experience and knowledge into wisdom that will enable you to manifest sacrificial love both for God and for neighbour. In that way, making you a true light to the world, full of the savour of salt, that others may be inspired and guided and led by you to come to the true, full and wholesome knowledge of God's love for them. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Corredo in unum Deum, Patrem Omnipotentem, Factorum Celi et Terre, Visibilium Omnium et Invisibilium, et in unum Dominum Iesum Christum Filium Dei Unigenitum, et ex Patrium Antum Ante Omnia Secula, Deum de Deo Lumen de Lumine, Deum Verum de Deo Vero, Gerito non Factum Tos et Ancianem Patri, Pequem Omnia Factus Sum, qui Protenos Homines et Protenos Sum Salutem Descendi de Celis, et Dicanatus est Spiritus Sancto ex Maria Virgine, et homo factus eis. Crucifixus etiam pro nobis upon so pilatu passus et sepultus eis, et resel rexit tesi et eis et punum scripturas, et descendit in celum sedere dexteram patis, et iterum et purus est cum gloria unitari vivos et motivos cuius reni non erit finis, et in spiritum sanctum dominum et fifificantem qui ex patri procedit, qui con patri et filio semel adoretur et cum glorificatur qui lucutus est per profetas, et unam sanctam catholicam et apostolicam ecclesiam, confitio unum baptismo in remissione peccatorum, et expecto resurrectione mortuorum, et vita venturi seculi. Amen. In Dominus Obiscum, et cum Spirito Tuo. Ordebus. Justus ut pavo florei visico cedrus quelli bano et, Motivit rapitur, Alleluia.
secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus obiscum, et cum spirito tuo, sol sum corda, habemus et dominum, gracias a gamus domino Deo nostro, dignum et justum eis. Veri dignum et justum eis ecum et salutare, te quidem domini omni tempore, sed in hoc potissimum gloriosius predicare, cum pasca nostrum imolatus eis Christus, ipsi erim velus eis agnus, qui abstulit peccatum mundi, qui motum nostrum oriendo disfluxi de vitam resurgendo reperavi, Et di Deo cam Angelis et Archangelis, controlis et nominationibus conque omnium isse celestis ex eficus, in nom gloria et tuoi canibus in e fine dicentes. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Sabaoka, plenis un celi et terra gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis. Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis.
Dios pueda hacer de que todo lo que Perdón, ya secula, secula, orum, ar. Ordemos, porque te sabe tu arribus mal y te debes social y comati, al demos dicho. Padre nuestro, de cuyas sin que el sangre de cielo no un tum, en venia de un tum, que polontas tu a seco de cielo e in terra. Padre nuestro, en cuadri anima nobis, al mía, y vinita en nobis, debita en nuestra, si de nuestro mitimus debitoribus nostis. Et ne nos inducas en tentacia. De libra nossa mano. Perra mia secula seculorum, ad, vexa domini si tempera vobiscum, et cum spirito tu. Agnus Dei, qui talis peccato mundi miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui talis peccato mundi miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui talis peccato mundi dona nobis pace. Ece agnus Dei, ece qui tolit peccato mundi. Domine, non sum dignus ut in tres subtectum meum, setentum dig vembo et sen nabitur anima mea. Domine, non sum dignus ut in tres subtectum meum, setentum dig vembo et sen nabitur anima mea. Domine, non sum dignus ut in tres subtectum meum, setentum dig vembo et sen nabitur anima mea. Brothers and sisters watching Mass online and unable, therefore, to receive the Blessed Sacrament, we invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. 
My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the blessed sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen. Constituit Dominus super familiam suam, ud et inis in tempore tritici mensuram. Alleluia. In Dominus Oviscum et cum Spirito Tuo. Orde. Ut nobis Domine tua sacrificia den salutem, beatus Gregorius Pontifex tuus et doctori gregius, caesimus precator et cedar, per Dominum nostrum Iaesum Christum filium tuum, qui tecum vive da regna ad unenitatis spiritus sancti Deus, terram ia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus Oviscum, et cum Spirito Tuo, ide misa eis, Deo gratia.
Sint Novin Domini Benedictum, ex omnunco dusco in secula, ut orbi nostrum in nomine Domini, qui fecit celum et terram. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus. Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Nominus Vobiscum et cum Spirito Tuo, initium Sancti Evangelii secundum Giovanni, Gloria Tibi Domini. In principio et verbum, et verbum eret ad Deum, et Deus eret verbum, hoc erat in principio ad Deum, omni prisum factus sunt, et simsum factus nihil, quod factum est. In ipsum vitae erat, et vitae erat, lux homin volus in terribus, luce et terribus, non comprehenderum. Ui tomo bisus repo, nevera raci vane, si venet in testimoni, mo testimoni bebere di lumine, et omnes credum perigum. Non erit in eidux, se non testimoni bebere di lumine, era lux vera qua illuminat omnem homine venientem in hocundum. In mundo erat, in modus plus sum factus est, in modus non cognovit, in proprio venit in sum non uceperum. Quar por autem uceperum, deum des volestat in filio stefli, eri che esquit rendi in nomine eius. Qui non è sanguinigus, ex voluntati cardis, ex voluntati viri, se ex deunati sunt. Et verbum carrum factum eis, et habitavit in nobis et minimus gloria meus, gloria un cantino genete a Padre, per un grazia e veritatis. Deo grazia. How many fruit grace the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. How many fruit grace the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. How many fruit grace the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn, then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, who art our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on thy people who cry to thee, and by the intercession of the glorious and blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and St. Joseph, her spouse, of thy blessed apostles Peter and Paul, and of all thy saints, in mercy and goodness hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother, the Church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy Michael, Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan and all wicked spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. The most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. The most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. The most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. May St. Gregory of Nazianzus, Bishop and Doctor of the Church, pray for us. May St. Catherine of Stenning pray for us, St. Wilfred of York pray for us, St. Richard of Chichester pray for us, St. Louisa of Alperston pray for us, Our Lady of Walsingham pray for us, Our Holy Guardian Angels pray for us, Our Heavenly Patron Saints pray for us, Our Lady Queen of Heaven and all the Angels and Saints pray for us. Mm -hmm. 